Tell me something, Dave. Yep. Are you pleased with what you've got and done? I can live with it. But can Ken Barlow? Well, it's like Harry Truman said, if you can't stand the heat, you shouldn't come into the kitchen. We're not talking about Harry Truman, we're talking about a kid who used to play marbles with our Dennis. Oh, save me the stroll down memory lane, please. Well, what were you doing at that time? Frogging knickers on the black market? What are you going on about? Just what you've done to Ken Barlow. Let him going around here yesterday thinking that he was the boss and you knowing all the time that he wasn't. Well, let's just say I have my reasons, shall we? Yes. What are they? Listen, I'm the kind of fellow who likes to put his feet in the water before he jumps in off the deep end, all right? Anyway, things have worked out all right for you, haven't they? Me? Well, it's uh, not so nice having the boss's wife breathing down your neck all the time, is it? Oh, yes. I do remember. Mrs. Pink Posey. Watch it. Oh, sorry, Auntie. I-, I wanted to get in before Mr... Yes. Oh, uh, n- nice morning. A bit, a bit nippy, though. Is he always like that? When he's conscious. Mrs. Barlow been in yet? No. Do you think she's coming in? I don't know. Would you? Who was it? Post. Oh. A dear John letter from Alan Howard's agent, plus one check, duly returned. Oh, well, that's that then, isn't it? Yes, that's that then. Get your breakfast before it I'll uh, just have a cup of tea, love. I don't feel like eating very much. Oh, Ken, I wish you'd told me before I started making Well, I was in the bathroom, wasn't I? I mean, I didn't know you were cooking it, did I? I suppose if you can't swim, you should stick near to the shore. What's swimming got to do with it? Me. I got out of my depth. Oh, love, you weren't to know he was going to play a dirty trick like that. You know, we've not just lost the salon. I've ended up at Dave Smith's joke of the month. Oh, well, there's no point in feeling sorry for us. I'm not. I'm just angry. I'm bloody angry. I'm angry with myself and I'm a damn sight more angry with Dave Smith. Well, all right, do something about it. I'm going to. I'm sorry to give you it all in pennies. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Carwell. As a matter of fact, I'm glad of them. Everybody seems to have been getting rid of the new ten bob pieces on me recently. Well, for myself, I quite like them now. I've got used to them. Yeah, so did I. Until I gave somebody one for two bob change last week. Oh, I, uh, I suppose you've heard about Dave Smith's latest dirty deed, then? I would rather not hear about it, if you don't mind. Thank you very much. Oh? Well, I've always had a very soft spot for Mr Smith, ever since he saved me from a fate worse than death. Oh, well, it's nice to know somebody's got a good word to say for him. Hello, Audrey. Yes, love. Uh, can I have a tin of salmon, please, Mrs. Clark? Right. Mrs. Venables of Acorn Street kept a tin of salmon for years. She said she wouldn't open it until we had the one on the run, and when we had the one on the run, it had gone bad. Mm. <laughs> well, I just thought Ray might like some for his supper tonight. Ah. Oh. What about Dicky? Doesn't he like tin salmon? Of course. You're, uh, you're not finding it too much for you, then? Two men in, uh... One house. As a matter of fact, things are a lot easier now, Ray's back on his feet. Uh, oh, Audrey. Yes, Mrs Caldwell. Uh, if you find that it's getting on top of you... Yeah. Uh, well, well, there is room with me. Oh, well, thanks very much, Mrs Caldwell, but Ray's no trouble to me at all, honest. I'd rather have a plate of finny addy myself. Uh, mm? Th- then ten salmon. Mm. Hello. Oh, am I glad to see you. It's been murdering here. Oh. It's all gone just yet. Stay and have a cup of tea. All right. Here, have this one. Thanks. You, uh, you are stopping on then? Um, for the moment, yes. And Ken doesn't mind? Oh, I'll see. Please, I don't want to talk about it. Morning, ladies. Not breaking anything up, am I? Going to talk? <laughs> I don't think so, Len. No. Um, Mrs. Caldwell was just worrying about uh, City's chances in the Cup Winners' Cup. Right. If they drop Neil Young as front runner and rely on Bell, Summerby, and Francis Lee as strikers. Uh, uh, mm, yeah, can I. Uh... Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Fairclough. I'm not really worried about City's chances. <laughs> I'm all right, thanks, Len. Oh, what about you, darling? No, got to be back in a jiffy. Thanks all the same. Well, the effie got off that lightly, didn't I? I was just beginning to break out in a cold sweat, I was. Give us half a pint of bitter beer for supping, will you, look? Hey, Van, what did you say? Half a bitter, please. <laughs> You're somewhat wrong. Have I got breakfast on my face? I'm sorry. I was staring, wasn't I? Yes. 
No, but is there something wrong? I mean, I, I, have I got something on my face? To tell you the truth, love, I was trying to recall what you looked like before you grew that moustache. Oh! Uh, like a bag of chips without any salt or vinegar. Mm. I'm like a bag of chips, and I thank you very much. Oh, that was one of our Mr. sayings. Did Mr. Caldwell have a moustache? No, but his father had, mm. waxed and pointed. He used to go to bed wearing a little moustache muffler to keep mm -hmm. it spick and span. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He must have slept on his back. Oh, they did. You see, you couldn't wake up with a bent moustache. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yours is more one of those Che Castro moustaches, isn't it? Uh, che Guevara. Oh, well, I could never tell one Mexican from another. <laughs> Sean Connery's got one. Oh, I didn't know he came from Mexico. <clears throat> Were you going for your holidays, love? Um, I'm not sure yet, Len. Oh, you've uh, got a bit of uh, froth. Oh, yeah. Hey, now look, am I to take it the present company is very down on moustaches in general, or just this one in particular? Now, whatever gave you that idea, I have nothing whatsoever against moustaches, and I'm quite sure none of the others have, have you? Oh, no. In any case, they've been sported by some very distinguished people. Film star Robert Donner, Charles Clark Gable. Uh, Orlando Henshaw. Orlando Henshaw. Hula. Oh, he lived in Afghan Street with a tandem. He asked me to ride down to the Wembley exhibition with him in 1925. Some of Mrs. Caldwell's <coughs> cycling friends? I didn't go, though, being spoken for by Armistead. John Gilbert, William Powell, Dr. Crippin, Fu Manchu, Bluebeard. They say Stalin had a nice one. Right. Yeah, you said only a few seconds ago that you weren't against moustaches. We're not, love. Oh, no, they can be very attractive. Oh, there's some people. I mean, if God didn't intend men to have whiskers, he uh, wouldn't have invented razors, would he? I'm not sure whether that's for or against. Oh, we're not against your moustache. It's very, um... Uh, distinguished? Distinctive. What are we talking about moustaches for, anyway? Look, do you like it or not? Do you like me better with it or without it? Len, it is not for us to judge. It is a very personal thing, and male vanity has always been a ticklish sort of subject. Male vanity? Lie on the floor, love. I'll fan you. What are you giggling at? I'm ticklish. Moustache. Ticklish. <laughs> Another <laughs> half, Len. Uh, no, no, thank you. Mrs. Caldwell. Do you think our seat is suited or not? Uh, speaking as a woman. You can speak as Georgie Best if you like, go on. Well, you won't be offended, will you? <laughs> Only it reminds me of Basil Brush. <gasps> Who's he when he's at home? Oh, he's Another one of your Afghan friends? No, he's a little fox on children's television. Oh, Basil you Brush. you think I look like a flipping fox, do you? You mean sort of cunning and sly and uh, oh, no. crafty-like? No, he's not like that. He's rather silly. Uh, daft as a brush. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <sighs> you know, I've got to admit it, young Audrey, when it comes to potato pies, yours leave Albert Tatlock's back in the traps. What do you know about Albert Tatlock's potato pie? You weren't even here when it happened. Ah, I know, but you don't have to go to the Arctic, mate, to know that it's no place for brass monkeys. Well, there's more in the pan if you want it. Oh, not for me, thanks, darling. It'll only go to waste. Well, I wonder if I could, but I can't, as my granddad said on his 80th birthday. Well, I'll have some more, please, love. Oh, well, will you get it yourself, Dickie, while I cut the cake? Look, uh, no cake for me, thanks, Audrey. Oh, are you sure? I'm positive. Oh, now at the table, Dickie. Take the plate to the cooker. What difference does it make? It'll drip all over the tablecloth. Oh, honestly. Hey, uh, you never told me Ina Sharples have been carried off by a great big Irish hod carrier. Or that Albert Tatlock has started gun running again from Berry Museum. Yeah, well, we, we wanted to keep it as a surprise. Well, you succeeded, mate. Hello, I thought, the minute my back's turned. You and Sandra out tonight, then? You wouldn't chuckle me, our son. Where are you off to? Ah, uh, two reserved seats. Back row of the look -see. Will you be late? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Why? Oh, no reason. I, I just got a tin of salmon in for your supper, like. Ah, well, you know how it is. It's a question of priorities, really. I mean, you know, I can get salmon any time, but Sandra in the back row of the look -see, eh? Oh, There's a right road of going about things and a wrong road of going about things. And unfortunately, Dave Smith always chooses the wrong road. Well, 
Yeah, but it goes deeper than that, doesn't it? It's the system, what's at fault? The system, Mr. Tesla. The, the system that says a fella like Dave Smith has got the right to take over somebody he knows doubt about just because he's got more money in a sense. Well, I would have thought that the fact that he's bought the business gave him that right. There you are now. You've put your finger on it, haven't you? That's what's been wrong with this country for umpteen hundred years now. You know, I don't think I know what you're talking about, Mr. Tesla. I'm Patrick. talking about landlords that have never known sweat under their armpits. And bosses that can't tell the difference between a shuttle and a clothespin. Oh, the Jared hunger marches are over now. I know, but for how long? And it's Jarrell, not Jarrett. I don't fancy your chances when the big day comes, you know, honey. I think you'll be the first on gas lamps yeah. around here. Uh, Scott, please, Mrs. Walker, and whatever the lads are having. Thank you very much, but I'm very particular who I'm seen supping with. I was just about to say the same thing. Mrs. Walker? Not just at the moment, thank you very much. I'll have a milk stout in the snook, thank you very much. I don't care what they say about you. That's my little sunshine. Turncoat. <laughs> Sticks and stones may break me bones, but calling never hurt me. You heard the lady, Mrs. Walker. Yes, Look, in my time, you'd have been blankoed all over and taken out of here on a pole. Well, in your time, they were still hanging him for sheep stealing, weren't they? Oh, but... Hang on, hang on. Do you mind if I do it? Oh, no, Mr. Fairclough. No, not at all. Look, look, look I've, I've, I've got a safety razor here if you would rather yeah, use yeah, that. Yeah, please. Would you? Thank oh. you. Yeah. Now, can you manage? Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Right. Thank you for the use of the tools. Well, that's all right, Mr. Fairclough. You're very welcome. Any time you want to share them with... I don't know. Do I work here just the same as you do? Well, what's going on then? Dave Smith wants to see us all. Oh. Well, I'm just introducing one of them incentive bonus schemes. Yes, and happens he wants to put us on piecework and pay us all by the yard. Just a few well chosen words before we all get back to the vineyard. First, on behalf of the new management, welcome. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Mm. Now, Mrs. Barlow stays on as senior hairdresser. I don't think anybody's any doubt about her value to the organisation. But I'm bringing in a new man in the men's salon, just to give it a bit of class, you understand? His name's Adam, but we shouldn't hold that against him, should we? Right, let's get cracking then, shall we? Oh, Val. Yeah? That uh, wasn't soft soap, you know, I meant that. Oh. Yeah. And to prove it, I'm going to give you a rise, starting from this morning. But don't spread it around, will you? We don't want to cause any ill feeling, do we? Well, uh, Mr. Smith? Yeah? Um, uh, about this Adam. What about him? Well, I, I was wondering where that leaves me, like. Oh, yes. Where does that leave you? Like. Yeah. Well, let's look at it this way, Brian. Uh, Bernard, Mrs Smith. Bernard. Well, there's no panic. Take as long as you like, but don't make it too long. Know what I mean? Well, well no, no, not exactly, Mrs Smith, no. To get yourself another job. Oh. <laughs> Why what? Why is he giving you the push? Well, I didn't really say, not in so many words. Did he use any words? Well, no, not really. It was more of an impression. Like I, I, I don't think he really feels that I fit into the scheme of things. No. Oh. Well, let's face it, you're not everybody's impression of Vidal Sassoon, but when it comes to cropping blokes, you're as good as the next, I suppose. Well, I suppose he has the right to dispense with my services if he feels to want to please. I mean, after, after all, it is his business, isn't it? Sacking you isn't. That's my business. The whisper is you want to see me. Right. Drink? No, thanks. Scotch, please, Mrs. Walker. <laughs> All right, what's on your mind? Three days ago, I came and asked you for a loan, right? Right. 
Up till that time, you didn't know the salon was for sale, right? Didn't I? Well, did you? Well, whether I knew or not isn't really the point, is it? I mean, how long had it been on the market? Two, three weeks? Oh, what's that got to do with it? <laughs> Everything. Because while I was out in the sun getting brown all over, what were you doing about it? No, I'll well, tell you. Dithering. Just like every other little businessman who thinks that all there is to running a business is raising the ante to buy it. Now, if a businessman sees something good going, he goes for it. And if you've got to tread on somebody to get it, that's just too bad, eh? Well, I didn't make the rules of the game. I just know the way it's played. Now, you think I didn't lend you that money because I wanted to cut you out, didn't you? Well, didn't you? <laughs> Come on, do me a favour, will you? I could have lent you the money and still beaten you to the post just by lifting the telephone. Do you really want to know why I didn't lend you that money? Go on. Because you're a bad investment. Because I'm old-fashioned enough to believe you can pick up a halfpenny without stepping on somebody's fingers to get it, right? No, because as a businessman, you make a very good school teacher. Your kind of businessman. There's only one kind of businessman, friend. The others go bankrupt. I must say, I sympathise completely with Kenneth in this matter. Our Val's the one I feel sorry for. She had her heart set on that salon. Look, ladies, far be it from me to stir things for you. But why didn't you do something about it instead of just standing here bitching? Like what, for instance? Well, we're the only ones who use the salon, aren't we? You mean... Not go there anymore. Why not? Well, I suppose I would if everybody else would. What about you, Mrs. Walker? Silent disapproval, yes. That kind of action, no. Silent disapproval with Dave Smith? Look, Len, never underestimate the power of public opinion. You mean your successful Lady Vitula has to be nice to everyone? Or to put it another way, your successful Lady Vitula, and I do speak with some authority on the subject, has to be all things to all men. Now let's put it yet another way, shall we? Your successful Lady Vitula has to be too flaming faced. You are, of course, at liberty to put that construction on it if you so wish. With friends like Anne Walker, who needs enemies? Yes, Mrs. Coleman. Uh, could I have a penneth of toffees all around the shop? Uh, in two packets, please. One for my friend and one for me. Your friend? Oh, if you could see your faces. <laughs> you wouldn't like to go out and come in again, would you? Uh, no, thank you, Mr Fairclough. Only, you see, I used to come in here for a penneth round the shop and they used to give you one toffee out of every bottle for a penny. It was uh, just a joke. See how you'd take it. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And um, what do you really want? Oh, nothing, thanks. I was going to buy some mints for Ray Langton as a welcome home present. Only he seems to be getting spoilt quite enough as it is by Audrey. Yeah. Hey, Tojo, I want a word with you. Talking to me? Well, I'm not talking to our cat. What's this about our Bernard getting the sack? Yes, well, he's what you might call a casualty in the March of Progress. I don't think that's very funny. No, neither do I, and if I could keep him on the strength, I would. What's wrong with him, then? He talks too much. Well, can he cut air or can't he? Yeah, he's, uh, as a barber, he's passable. As a conversationist, he's a kiss of well, death. Well, he's not paid to be a Malcolm Mugridge, is he? Listen, he's boring the pants off the customers. He's driving them away. Well, what does Adam do? Conjuring tricks? He keeps his mouth shut and he gets on with the job. Elsie, don't let's have a civil war about this. You said yourself he gets on your nerves. Yes, he's a right to get on my nerves. I'm his mother's sister. Well, I've a right to fire him. I'm his boss. I see. So that's it, is it? Yes, that's it. Right. All right. Something wrong? It's that scent you're wearing. You wore that the day we got married, remember? Mm -hmm. so. Don't you remember? Well, I suppose so. I wasn't really thinking. Is this skirt straight at the back? It always did get me going. Oh, well, is it or isn't it? There's a thread hanging. What? Oh. What made you put that on, then? Oh, look, what does it matter? It's just a cheap scent, that's all. Here, cut it off for me, will you? All right. Don't oh. pull it. Oh, now look what you've gone and done. You've well, I'm sorry, it just seemed to come I away. I told you not to pull well, it. Well, I'll pin it up for you. Oh, don't bother, you're so clumsy. Here, I'll let Ray do it. Let Ray do what? Pin this M up for me, will you? Well, look, I tell you, darling, if it was something straightforward like a brain transplant you wanted, I might be able to help you. But, oh, uh... don't mess about, Ray. It'll only take a minute. Yeah, well, all right, but uh, I'll mark you for life. Don't say I didn't warn you.
Hey, Langton, gear off her. Hey, I'd know those legs anyway. Now, don't tell me, let me guess. Jackie Charlton. How would you like a kneecap in your left ear hole? Here, look, just pin this thing up for Audrey before I do us both an injury. Give it here. Ah. Has uh, Sir Alf Ramsey heard about those legs? Shut up, will you? Ow! I'm sorry, Audrey. Bye, Gum. You got to the point of that quickly, didn't Shut you? Shut up. Oh, look, don't bother. I'll do it myself. Hi, right, well, uh, what about a quick bevy then before we find that back row? I think I'll just pop round to the salon, sort something out first. All right. Oh, and uh, look, don't wait up, eh, mother? Rover's return? Who? Oh, yes, I'll accept the charge. Hello, Lucille, dear. How are you? Well, you're not going to sit there and stand for it, are you? Well, there's not really much I can do about it, Mr Tatlock. He sacked me and that's that. Only that is not that, is it? Is it not? Is he take us like? What do you think would have happened to civilization if, if we said that's that when that other dictator with a little moustache marched into Poland? Yeah, but what exactly are you suggesting, Mr Tatlock? Look, can you cut her or can't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm reasonably good at that. Uh, and you don't need a fancy front room with lots of bottles full of coloured water to do it in, do you? What? What do you mean? You mean set up on my own in opposition, like? That's right. Something wrong, Mrs Walker? Lucille's coming home next week. Oh, well, that's good news, isn't it? <laughs> well, in the normal course of events, certainly, but I'm afraid we're having the bedrooms redecorated. There's nowhere for her to sleep. Oh. Well, I'm sure Miss Nugent won't mind uh, you pushing Lucille in with her for a few days. No, but will Lucille mind? Hey, Langton, is it true that you've retired permanently, or might we see your happy, smiling face down at the yard at some time? Why, Uncle Lennon. And there was I thinking you never even noticed that gun. Hey, uh, have you ever thought of growing a moustache? When? See this wet, see this dry, I'll be in before July. You must be joking. Hey, Ken, I'm sorry about the salon. Yeah. Ah, well, you've got to get up pretty early in the morning to catch honest Dave napping, haven't you? You can keep him. Hey, uh, still, you, you've got to... Well, you've got to admit it, really. He gets the results in the business. Yes, only this time, he's going to get a couple of results he hadn't bargained for. You heard something? Well, let's just say a little bird told me, shall we? Is this place always has a refuge tip at closing time, then? There's a brush and shovel in the corner, if you'd care to use it, or perhaps you'd rather wait for Hilda Ogden. She'll be in in the morning, which is more than I will. Or me. Oh, I see. It's going to be like that, is it? Yes, boss. Oh, and our Bernard asked me to tell you to say that he wouldn't be in tomorrow. But then, of course, you knew that, didn't you? Oh, well. Three less wages to pay, I suppose. Not quite. Four less. 